Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I'm going to show you how to roll an obelisk to get the stats that you want. Well, not really, but I've done this before for comic cards and you guys uh, enjoy it. I really enjoy it as well. So I wanted to take you through the process that I go through when I'm tr picking and choosing and trying to find the right obelisk. Not only for specific characters, but also in general that I think will apply to the most characters possible. So for this kind of experiment slash suffering episode, I've saved up a bunch of Styx Star Obelisks. Uh, most recently I've been trying to re-roll an Obelisk for Vulture to give him a damage proc to use him in Shadowland, because we don't have very many speed villains. We actually have very few good ones. Uh, and so I've saved up quite a few uh, of the red obelisks that you see that are unlocked. So all of the locked ones that I have are usually ones with good stats. Like this one's guard break 200, very good. This one's guard break 5 seconds, also very good. But all of these other ones here, I don't want to go through the stats uh, one at a time because it's just going to take too long and it's not that interesting. But all of these stats here are either completely useless or they're just suboptimal. Now, for some of you guys, it may be upsetting to see me re-rolling an obelisk like this one with crit damage and 140 proc. Frankly, it's just not good enough for me. I need 160 and up. Even 160 is not that tempting unless both of the stats, the blue stat and the orange stat, are premium. Like crit damage, crit rate, or ignore dodge, crit rate, or something like that. So I'm really looking for kind of the best of the best, kind of like the way that I approach the comic cards. Because I'm a veteran, because I'm at the end game, I can't accept a card that has one good stat and two bad stats, or two good stats, actually two good stats and one bad stat is okay, as we've shown with the Spider-Man, the baby spider card. But with the obelisks, it's a little bit less, there's a little bit less wiggle room. Because it's only going on one character, you have to be, in my opinion, more strict about the kinds of obelisks you equip. Um, just also to preface, the reason, one of the reasons why I was able to collect so many of these obelisks so quickly is because there was a sale on about a week ago for, uh, it was five, it's kind of like this one, but it was five extreme obelisks, five six star obelisks for a thousand crystals. Now for new players or, you know, very low spending players, it's not a good deal, but for even mid-level spending players or high VIPs, it's a great deal because it gives you, uh, you know, basically one chance every 200 crystals to reroll an obelisk or reroll a CTP to have fantastic stats. So I usually buy all of those when they show up, and the last pack of 10 that I bought, I decided to just save them because I didn't have any good obelisks that I wanted to reroll. So that kind of explains that. Secondly, I want to really quickly address where I get all of my obelisks from. So of course you should always be doing special missions because those are your primary source of 1, 2, and 3 star obelisks. Uh, I do it every day, 20 times. Uh, I also usually get quite a few hidden tickets from my boost point subscription. And I also buy hidden tickets in the shield lab, which we'll talk about in a minute for obelisks. Uh, hidden tickets can provide you with additional 3, 4, and 5 star, and even 6 star obelisk so you can get some pretty nice things from the hidden ticket rewards actually just today on the live stream I got a five star uh, obelisk as part of my hidden ticket or hidden route reward uh, also in the epic quest on the sorcerer supreme side you have the memory missions any one of these if you play them three times they will drop one two and three star obelisks so never forget to do these even after you've completed the doctor strange epic quest uh, you can sometimes get them as additional rewards in other game modes, but I'm not going to talk about that as much because I don't really farm these other game modes. The only one of note is really Villain Siege. I always use my Chaos Tokens to get custom gear chests. I actually did that today, and that's why I'm down to 590. I'm under 2000, which is what I usually wait for to hit that times 10 chest. I don't really like to buy the times 1 or the times 5. Uh, the only other place that you can you know, consistently get, consistently, where you can get the uh, obelisks from, of course, the Alliance shop, but I'm talking about the lab. Now, I know that a lot of people have criticized the lab for reducing the number of normal shop items that we have, which thereby reduces the, it also increased the amount of items that we can buy, but it thereby reduced the number of obelisks, one, two, and three star that we can buy with gold. And I definitely agree, but when they do appear and when I've saved up enough tokens to refresh the list, I purchase any obelisks that I see for gold. I never purchase them for crystals, but that is how I amass all of my obelisks, and then I take the time to reroll them. Also, if I happen to have enough, I also use the processor to produce uh, obelisks right here, but this costs quite a bit of not only feathers, but also stark blueprints. So this is very much an end game source of, obel of obelisks. I don't expect the majority of you guys to be using this because you're still saving your Phoenix feathers for Jean Grey and a whole bunch of other characters that need them. So that is how I get all of my obelisks. 
Um, I usually try to roll at least one six star obelisk per day. That's kind of my goal, but recently I've had to skip that because I just don't have enough materials. Now, when I have a whole bunch of obelisks uh, at one stars, two stars, and three stars, uh, that is kind of the first step. And I don't have any here to show you guys today, but you can basically just imagine having a whack of obelisks from doing your daily missions, like we just discussed, the specials and stuff like that, in your inventory. From there, I click through all of them to find ones that have guard break immunity as a first stat. First stat meaning it's the orange stat at the top, or it has max HP as the first stat. Those are basically the only two stats that I really really want and that's why most of my locked obelisks unless they're ctps happen to have guard break so these two have guard break the one we're going to be re-rolling today also has guard break it's this one right here and then actually this one's fire damage because it was on gene gray but most of the other ones are max hp so in my case aside from this one crit damage because it's really nice it's got ignore defense and 180 and this crit damage because it has cold in four seconds for bobby when we get him aside from that i don't really roll anything else i was rolling ignore dodge for a while but i think Guard break is, is slotted number one, guaranteed. Second one, max HP. Third one is kind of a toss up between crit rate, crit damage, and ignore dodge, depending on what you need. But I honestly wouldn't roll anything else. Uh, unless you want to go really specific for certain characters, like rolling cold damage for Luna Snow, or rolling mind damage for, you know, Emma Frost or Mysterio, um, you're really much better off rolling one of those other obelisks and hoping to land those additional elemental stats as secondary. Uh, options. One of the only exceptions to this rule would be uh, Thor. If you're rolling an obelisk for Thor, I would say start with lightning damage. Guard break is great, lightning damage is a must. So here we go, I have this guard break, it's got freeze, it's got uh, stun. This is basically garbage, there's nothing on this that I want. Hopefully I don't get the roll that I want on the very first try because not only will that shorten the length of this video, 10 minutes, but it will also not allow me to show you guys the different stats that you don't want on an obelisk. Because I still see a lot of people saying, is this stat good? Is that effect good? And I can just say quickly, they're all bad, but it's better if I can show you guys which ones are bad so you know for sure. Because the wording can be kind of confusing, and sometimes they use similar words. So here we go, we're just going to use one of these other obelisks. This is Lightning Resist Stun 140. Might be good enough for you guys, not for me. Here we go, first roll. Okay, so we got Guard Break, Lightning Damage 120. This is actually not bad uh, if the Lightning Damage was a little bit higher, but more importantly, if the Damage Proc, this right here, this Activation Rate, this text in the green, this is what a Damage Proc is. If it doesn't have 10% chance, if it doesn't have 100 to 200%, and if it doesn't have a cooldown of 7 seconds, and the Activation of 5 seconds, it's not a Damage Proc. Plain and simple. But obviously these numbers are just not high enough for me, so I'm going to re-roll it again. Uh, stun, dodge, three seconds. This one's actually not bad either for characters like, let's say, Singularity. This would actually be potentially very good because she already has immune to guard break and she has guaranteed dodge. So this could make her quite difficult to crowd control even without a debuff leadership. Kind of be a sleeper pick for something like Alliance Conquest. But I don't play Alliance Conquest. It's kind of a garbage game mode. And three seconds of invincibility is just not enough for me. So we're going to change this one over. Here we go. We got lightning resist and freeze. There's really not a lot of rhyme or reason to what you get when you reroll an obelisk. So it's kind of just luck or, in my case, bad luck. Uh, one piece of advice I can give you that might seem obvious, but never use CTPs to reroll other obelisks. Don't do that. Um, my advice would be to, to use these red obelisks, these six star extremes, to roll CTPs first. Once you have the CTPs rolled, then you can roll other obelisks. So in my case, if I just uh, cancel out of this, I already have this one rolled to 200. I already have both of these rolled pretty well. I could possibly, this one's also, I could possibly reroll this one or I could possibly reroll some of these, but I really just want to reroll the guard break immunity because I just really want guard break immunity and a sweet proc like 180 or 200. I might take a five second immunity, invincibility, but that's just what I want. So here we go. This one, not bad. Fire resist is nice against Jean Grey and a couple of other fire characters. Three seconds, just not long enough. So we're going to try to upgrade it again, change the option. I got confused there for a second. That was weird. Here we go. This one is good that we got this one. Okay, I see this one a lot. People asking energy damage 260%. They think this is a damage proc. This is not a damage proc. It's got a cooldown of four seconds. It's got no five second and the percentage is over 200. So that's not a damage proc. It's called damage falls on the head. It's basically garbage. It does like no damage. Uh, if you get that, unfortunately, you did not get a damage proc. If you have those as effects on characters currently and you think they're damage procs, that might be why your character doesn't do any damage against World Boss Ultimate or you're not getting the ABX scores that you thought you should be getting. 
Rolled it again. Cold resist, energy shield. Okay, we've got a bunch of dud rolls. The energy shield ones seem good. 20% of max HP, 10 seconds with a cooldown of 13 seconds. And if the game had a different playstyle, these would be good. Uh, because having a, an extra 20% HP, basically every 10 seconds, every 13 seconds you have it up, um, it would be good. But unfortunately, people's HP just goes down way too fast. Damage is way too powerful and compared to defenses that it would never work. The only character that it might work on for just the slightest chance is someone like Destroyer or possibly Blue Marvel. But the CTP of Refinement does it even better than that, so we're left with another bad stat. I guess if they wanted to make it better, they could bump it up to 60%. I think if it was 60% of max HP, people would try it, and it might actually work on certain characters. But let's try to reroll this again, see what we get here. Two second freeze, snare. Just not good. Stay away from the freeze. I know it seems tempting. Two seconds of freeze on a six second cooldown. Man, so much crowd control. It doesn't work. Any debuff leadership renders the obelisk useless. And then there's no point. And you might as well just rely on some crowd control from the skills you have existing or none. Don't try to go all crowd control. It's never going to work. Okay, great. Cold resist freeze. That's exactly what I wanted. I don't even know how many obelisks we are in. We had like 15 or 16 saved up. I feel like we're going to go through all of them before we actually get something worth worthwhile. Freeze again with snare again. <sighs> okay, yeah, uh-huh. At least it's not comic cards, guys. That's all I can say. At least it's not comic cards. Here we go. Damage falls on the head. Ignore defense. No good. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Okay, fire resist crit damage 140. This one's actually not bad. Let's see what we get. Sacrifice the good one, still get a bad one. I'm just obsessed with snare resist, apparently. And again, physical shield, 12%, no good. Dummy, obelisk, trap obelisk. Here we have a max HP. Sometimes I like keeping these to reroll, but right now I'm very dead set on guard break immunity. So we're going to try it again. Poison damage, energy shield. And you can just see how many times you can reroll an obelisk and not get any good stats. Uh, because this happens... My advice to you is to always start at the bottom. So don't roll any obelisk up to six stars. Always roll obelisks that you would want at six stars with their primary stat, i.e. in this case, crit damage. So if this rolls crit damage with a proc, I'll be happy. But if you just take any five star obelisk, let's say the first stat is poison resist. And then what if the other two stats are really great? Now you have a bad obelisk with, with some good stats because you decided to roll a five star obelisk up to six that started with poison resist or, I don't know, fire resist or immune to stun or something kind of suboptimal. So always try to weed out and funnel and, and filter to the ones that you want at two stars, uh, max HP and guard break immunity. And then if you want some of those other ones like ignore dodge, crit rate or crit damage, you can get those at one star or two star variety, the red tubes or the uh, kind of gray statues that look like the Washington Memorial. Uh, and then from there, upgrade those to three stars, four stars, five stars, six stars. And then if that roll is bad, you can re-roll them. But at least in that situation, you got an extra roll out of getting that good statted obelisk, that, that guard break or that max HP, getting that to six stars first. That counts as a roll, as a shot at the dice to see if you'll get what you want. We got a couple more here. We got six. Wow. So many bad rolls. I'm going to be editing this video. So sad. Here we go. Damage falls on the head. Cold resist. All right, nothing yet. Number 12, 13, I don't know, dodge, something. Okay, wow. Okay, this one is actually almost good enough. Guard break, recovery rate, four seconds. If this was five seconds, I would take this in an instant. No questions. But it's four seconds. It's almost not good enough. I'm being a little bit picky now. I'm being a bit frustrating. But in addition to the four seconds, I also think that... I don't need as many invincibility obelisks. I don't do a lot of PvP. I, I stay away from conquests, as I told you. I don't do a lot of timelines, so I feel like damage procs would be more fun. Not that recovery rate is an offensive stat. It's a defensive stat, but that's just my uh, thought. It could go nice on someone like X23 if I wanted to make her tankier, but actually what I'm going to do is leave it up to you. Let me know, sound off in the comments below, should I keep this obelisk, guard break, recovery rate, 4 seconds, or should I dump it? and re-roll with these other obelisks, which I can do at a later time on a later video, at the end of another video tomorrow or something like that. I'll be watching, I'll be reading, sound off, let me know, and of course, subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me, hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my uploads, and of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.